All right, guys, welcome to part three of this uh, server build we've been working on. And um, I just got a tip from one of the gentlemen commenting on the video named Brian. And uh, he found a, a power extender cable that had a 90 degree angle on it where the clip has been shaved down and been custom made by hand to, uh, to take up as little space as possible coming off the graphics card. And he wanted to know if that would work to make it where I get that 780 Ti Mini in with the server and i was very curious so i looked at it and i was like man this might work so went on ebay bought one for about 14 it's like 12 to 14 dollars depending on which angle you needed i think i needed the right angle um and had to wait for a few days for that to ship in but it just got here and i installed it on the card and it looks like we had success so let me um cut to that and see what happens all right guys here's the difference between that custom right angle crimped and bent and the standard connector for the 8 pin power plug and uh, it's a huge difference and if your system really needs tight tolerances I recommend it a lot and here's what it looks like on the graphics card as you can see it takes up hardly any space at all I don't know how you'd get any closer alright and this is the um, PCI Express 8X that I modified to take a full size graphics card just using a small little air tool and uh, I'll show you a clip of that probably at the end of the video just so you can get an idea and then uh, this is the card ready to go into the server I've got everything pushing as far as possible I even bent the wires a little bit sharper than it came from the eBay seller just to get every little millimeter I can um, this is a pretty hard to reach spot because of where all the metal brackets are so just be really careful when you're putting in your card that it doesn't um, just jam up on you and uh, don't forget to put your little blue clips because that'll that'll hold it nice and stable so I tried to use the uh, original mounting brackets for this card but it just wasn't working for me there was not enough space so I had to remove all of the extra plastic you can see right here that is designed to help the riser stay nice and rigid. I had to take it off. There was no way around it. And that's a T10 is the um, little socket that I used in case you need to go to Walmart and buy one so you can get that piece of plastic off. And also the retaining clip on that riser card had to be removed because it interfered with the power cable on this card where it sets. Um, so I just lined it up kind of wiggled it in. Um, I actually had to flex the PCB just a little bit. I think you'll be able to see um, in the clip up ahead, but um, just had to wiggle it in and it just barely fit, but it did fit and I think it's going to be pretty secure. You can see right here, I mean that power cable is literally bending that PCB out maybe a half a millimeter, but I think it'll work. Um, I don't think I'm going to have any trouble with it. And uh, yeah, this is just a close-up to see what it looks like once it's all mounted. And then all there's left to do is uh, put all the other pieces back in. So I'm going to speed up through that so you don't have to take too long. So that was a pain putting the pieces in and out of the server over and over again trying to get things to fit. But, you know, sometimes you just have to do what you got to do and uh, make it happen. So now this thing is quite a beast. Um, I was running some Cinebench on it and uh, getting over a thousand on there and I was surprised to find out that the eight lanes on that PCI Express is not a problem for the graphics card. It doesn't throttle it at all. Like I said, I've been running it in my Ryzen system overclocked to four gigahertz and I'm getting the same frame rates in games as that system with this system. So I'm really surprised that it only needs eight lanes. Um, something else to keep in mind is that riser 1 only has four lanes per slot so even though it has an 8x um, physical slot it's only four lanes of actual electrical connection because it has to split it up between three cards so you definitely want to put your graphics card in riser 2 and as promised here's a little sped up clip of how I modify these cards the first few times I tried it um, I ran with the cutting wheel in the slot but I realized it's actually too wide and you'll cut the pins so doing it perpendicular um, like I'm doing it here 
is definitely the best way to do it. Just cut a little bit at a time and get a little bit closer, a little bit closer until um, you've cut that last little bit away and you can start to see the pins. And, um, and that's going to work out the best for you. Just be really gentle, careful, and kind of just melt it away is, uh, is how I've been doing it. And uh, you'll be able to see right here what the end result is. And you can just see how those pins are just starting to get visible. And that way you don't damage any of your pins. Because if you're doing this on your riser 2, then all of those pins are active. And if you damage those, it'll still work. But you'll be running at four, PCI Express 4X. And um, that might uh, throttle you down. I don't know. I haven't tested it. So I definitely would recommend being as careful as possible when cutting out the back of your card. But so far, everyone I've tried has actually worked. So thanks for watching to the end of the video with me, guys. And uh, on my next video, we're going to be going into how to set up this system to run multiple workstations at the same time so you can have three or four people playing video games at the same time on the same computer using their own mouse, keyboard, and monitor. So I'm going to be going over that uh, in the next video. Uh, also going to be going over some more benchmarks probably on this system. If you have any questions, just you know, go ahead and ask them in the comments, and uh, I'll try to address them just like with this power cable idea. It was really awesome because now instead of using the 980, I have the 1070 Ti, which is a lot faster card. So I'm really excited about that, and I really appreciate that comment. And uh, while we are talking, I figured I'd run a little Cinebench for y'all to see what this is happening. Um, I also upgraded the processor, and um, it is now a Xeon, let me check. I think it's a Xeon 5670 now is what I'm running. Uh, I'll know for sure. Yes, it's the uh, Xeon 5670. Uh, picked up two of those on eBay for just, tw I think, $12 a piece. It was something ridiculous with free shipping. Um, but I've been watching them for about a year and finally found one, so I'm pretty excited about that. So as you can see on here, the Cinebench score... 1,280 and that is while we are recording the audio for this video so I'm pretty excited about that and also the graphics score on uh, 3d mark is just outstanding it's running 4k um, 60 frames a second with pretty uh, either ultra or high details on all the games I play or it'll run um, regular settings uh, at like 1080p on three different gaming systems like I said I'll be showing you how to do that in the next video but uh, really appreciate the uh, the tip on where to find that uh, right angle power cable. It was a huge help. And uh, y'all have a good one. Peace.